friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day three of my 2021 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Furry and Bright Window Scene Winter, Ready Set Snow, and Simply Celebrate Winter. So before I get to the coloring, I actually wanted to do a little bit of masking really quick on this little window scene. I wanted to add the Santa and the reindeer silhouette, but I wanted it to be back behind the trees to make it look a little bit further in the distance. So I just quickly masked off those two trees that it was going to go in front of and I'm stamping down with jet black ink, which is what I always use for Copic coloring. So I've stamped that down one time. That was a perfect impression the first time. And now I can peel off those little masks. And now you can see that that Santa and sleigh image is behind the trees. So it just gives it a little bit more depth in the scene. I stamped the rest of the images I'll be using on a separate panel and I'll get to that a little bit later on but first I wanted to color this background. I'm going to start with the sky and I'm using a super light marker to begin with. I'm using B quadruple zero and I'm laying that down at the top of the snowbank and doing a flicking motion toward the top of the scene. I want to start with this really pale color because I want to get that paper nice and saturated so I get a really great blend. And then I also want it to be darker at that horizon line and fade lighter as it gets toward the top. I'm imagining that there is a moon up above the scene that we cannot see, but it would be casting some light up there. So I wanna have a lighter top part of the sky. So now I'm coming in with a little bit of a darker blue. This is B91. B90s have a lot of gray tone in them, so I think they work really well for a winter night sky because it just has that really cool feel to them. So I'm going to blend that in with the B quadruple zero once again, making sure that everything is nice and smooth. And then I'm going to darken that up even further with the B93. And once again, I'm just starting right at the top of that snowbank and laying in that darkest color and doing that flicking motion toward the top. So it kind of comes to little points at the top, which is going to help it blend into the next shade. So when I come in with that B91 and catch those little feathered edges, it's gonna give me a nice smooth blend. And then I'll continue on with that B quadruple zero to fill in the rest of the sky. For the snowbank, I'm going to use just that B quadruple zero and add a bit of depth there, just casting a little bit of a frosty glow at the top and a little bit on the sides as well. And I did do a second layer of that off screen. And then for the birch trees, I'm going to use T1 and T0 and just do a line down the edges just to define them a little bit and make them pop off the page. So I did that with the T1 and then I'm going to blend that out with the T0, but I'm still going to stick close to the outside edge of the tree because I want them to look white. I just want to give them a little bit of roundness to them. That's all I'm gonna do for that background. So now I'm gonna switch to my other sheet of images. And I'm going to go back to that B quadruple zero and the B zero zero and add a bit of shading to the snowman because he's supposed to look like he's made of the same snow that he's gonna be standing in. So I wanna use the same shades. And then I'm going to use that T1, T3, and T5 to color in the couch. So in my house, we actually have a bench that sits in front of our living room window. And that is one of the favorite places to sit for our dog, Gemma. She just loves to watch the neighborhood or keep an eye out for one of us if we've been gone to um, see when we come home and so it got me thinking about this little scene and I wanted to depict Gemma when she was a puppy 
sitting in front of the window watching for Santa. But instead of a bench, I'm gonna use this great lawn fawn couch. I'm so excited to have some lawn fawn furniture. I think it gives us so many more opportunities to create indoor scenes with the various critters or people. So I am coloring it gray because that's the color of the bench that we have. And this is pretty much the right gray tone as well. So I'm using that T5 first for the darkest areas, the outer curves of the arms and also the underside of that seat cushion. And then when I do the back of the couch, I'm also going to add some depth where the cushions meet and also where those little lines are to indicate the different sections of the back of that. And then I'm blending that out with the T3 and I'll use the T1 as a highlight. And I'm just kind of working back and forth because I want it to look like a really kind of cozy fabric because that's kind of what ours is made of. So just trying to mimic that and give it like almost like a fuzzy look a little bit. So once I have that all colored in, I'm gonna move on to the throw pillow and I'm gonna start with a lighter red. I'm gonna use R22, R24, and R29. A Little bit of that R29 down at the bottom and also in the little crease in the center. And then I'm gonna blend up with the R24 and I'll finish with the R22. And I am going to add some little details to that later on, but I wanna let that ink dry first. So while that's drying, I'm also going to do the scarf of the snowman and the ribbon on the bone. And by the way, that tiny snowman is from Simply Celebrate Winter. I just masked him out of the long row of snowmen because I just wanted one small one. And the ones from Ready Set Snow were too large for the scale that I was going for. So really quick and easy, just masked him out, used YR04 for his nose, and then I'm using E41, E42, and E43 to color in the dog bone. I use the E43 to add a bit of definition, and then I'm blending that out with the E42, and I'll finish with the E41. So now we're coming to the pup, and like I said, I wanted it to look like my dog Gemma. She is a Blue Merle Australian Shepherd, so there's a lot of different colors there to work with. So I'm going to quickly do a base layer of W00 and W1 just to add a little bit of shading to the white parts of her body. A lot of that is going to get covered up but it's just easier for me to do it this way than to try to go back and shade in the lighter areas later on. So next I'm gonna work on her copper patches and she's got copper right around her eyes, also on her back legs, and then a little bit on her front legs. So I chose E31, E33, and E35. I added a little bit of depth with that E35 first and then blend it out with the E33. And then I'm finishing with the E31. And that's such a light color that it's going to really blend easily into the rest of the shades. So now I'm going back to my T's. I'm using T1, T3, T5, and then adding in T7. So Gemma has a little bit of a mark above her left eye, it almost looks like a little eyebrow. So I added that in. And then I'm adding some little black patches on her back and her sides and also to her ears. And just doing like little squiggly motions cause that's kind of how her patterning looks. And then I can blend that out with the T5. Just going right over the edge of that or right over the entire thing if they're super small so that all of the edges get nice and blurred. And then I'll use the T3 next and just continue adding in those shades and, you know, kind of adding in those darker. She's got black, gray, white, and kind of like a light gray. So there's a lot of colors in there to 
add into the mix, but um, I think it all comes together. It's definitely not exactly perfect, but it definitely does resemble her quite a bit, especially because I left the little white socks on her back feet, and then she has white front legs as well and a white belly. So I just use that T1 to kind of blend out the rest of it and I'll call that good. And so I'm going to do the feet of the couch. I pulled out E57 and E59, but I am going to end up adding in a third shade there. So I'm going to grab E55 for the highlight and just blend out the edge of that E57 with that. And now I'm ready to add my patterning to the pillow. And just so everything matches, I'm going to use that T7 once again and also R39. I'm going to start with that R39 and do some diagonal stripes going one direction and then flipping and doing them the other direction to create a plaid. I also made sure to make them wide enough apart that I could go between those stripes with my T7. And I'm being very careful to use the very tip of my marker with light pressure so I can get really fine lines. So once I add those last few stripes, I will trim all of these images out with their matching dies. For the window, I'm going to take the window frame die and trim that out of some white wood grain cardstock. And then I'm going to take some Let It Shine Snowflakes pattern paper and I'm going to flip through and find a sheet that I want to use for some wallpaper. My living room walls are gray, so that's why I went with the gray and trimmed that down with the large stitch rectangle stackables. Then I'm adding some glue from the glue tube to the back of that window frame and I'm going to adhere that over the background. I did not die cut that with the die that comes with it. I just trimmed it down so it would have a little bit of a larger edge so I would have a little bit of wiggle room to adhere that down. And then I'll also take that tiny snowman and adhere him in the window uh, leaning up against the birch tree that is on the far right. To start assembling my scene, I'm going to take the pattern paper and adhere that down to a piece of Moonstone cardstock. And I've just folded and scored that to a standard A2 size card with a top fold. So I adhered that to cover the entire card front and then I'm adding the wood grain cardstock down at the bottom. And then I've trimmed out a tiny strip of white cardstock for the baseboard. Before I go any further, I wanted to stamp out my sentiment, so I'm using some lobster ink for that because it's such a bright Christmassy red. And I'm stamping out the sentiment that says, may your days be furry and bright. I stamped that down twice to make sure I had a good impression. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty and I'm going to stamp the inside with forget-me-not ink. So it's like just a shade darker than the Moonstone cardstock. So I did have to clean that off with my stamp chamois because I hadn't cleaned those images off yet and then I re-stamped that and it was much better. So now I'm ready to assemble the rest of my scene and I'm going to start with the large window because I want to have that spaced correctly. Uh, right between the top of the scene and the baseboard. I want it to be about equal between that. And then I'm going to pop the couch up with some foam tape in front of that window to help that window look even more pushed back in the scene. It's just going to add more depth. So I'm going to remove all of the paper from the back and then I'm going to pop that up right down in front just so it's covering the bottom edge of that window. You can kind of see the little corners poking out. So then I just needed to check how much of the little pup is going to be hanging over the top of the couch. So I added a bit of foam tape to the back of her head and then I'll use liquid glue for the rest of her and then add her so that she's standing on that couch peeking out. 
In the right corner, I'm going to add the pillow and I'm just using some liquid glue for that. And then in front of that, I'll add the little dog bone with the bow. I trimmed down the sentiment with one of the everyday sentiment banners and added some foam tape to the back of that as well. And I'm gonna push that up right under the very edge of the legs of the couch just to kind of integrate it a little bit more into the scene. And then I'm going to take some Stardust stickles and add a bit of glitter, because you can't have a Christmas card without any glitter. So I put some on the ribbon for the dog bow and also to the snowman scarf. And then I decided to add some to the birch trees as well, so they could have a bit of frost on them. And that is going to complete my card for today. So there you can see all of that sparkle. And I'll give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had so much fun creating this adorable scene and taking me back to when Gemma was a little pup. So if you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. And now that it's holiday card season, there'll probably be some bonus videos as well. If you'd like to keep watching, here is day three of the previous two years of holiday card series. And if you're interested in the products, you'll find them listed and linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.